To God be the glory. We thank the Lord for the rain. Kasi medyo matagal-tagal na rin na wala tayong ulan. But we also continue to pray for our brothers and sisters, especially in the Visayas in southern Luzon, those who were affected by the typhoons. I think uh, Onyok is still around. I hope he will not visit Sambuanga City. We thank the Lord for His sustaining grace. Indeed, He is worthy of our praises and adoration. We had a student in Mount Apo Alliance Bible College several years ago. He was a pure-blooded Maranao. And he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And he went to Bible school to be trained for ministry. In fact, today he is in the Visayan Islands, a Maranao, preaching the gospel to the Cebuano-speaking people in the Visayas. One of his testimonies, he said that being a child of a very influential person in the tribe, he was given so many privileges. But he said, Marami po kami, pastor. We are many in the family. So I asked him, how many brothers and sisters do you have? And he said, 36 po kami. 36. And so I asked him, do your father know your names? And he said, unfortunately, pastor, he does not know all of our names. He knows the names of our mothers, but he does not know our names because we are so many. It only shows human limitations. If there are so many, sometimes you don't really recognize all of them. But God, in spite of the fact that he created billions of non-living and living things. He remembers men and he touches men. Kindly open your Bibles to the book of Psalms, Psalm 8, verses 1 to 9. Psalm 8, 1 to 9. It says here, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds, and the beast of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. To God be the glory. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. The psalmist is expressing his deep emotion of what God is. God is majestic. God is awesome. God is great. He created everything. Man? Man is so insignificant. If you look at yourselves, compare yourselves with animals, you'd notice that evolution is playing a joke on us. If indeed evolution is true, it's playing a joke because until now, we have not grown wings. If indeed that 
because of evolution, we are becoming better and better. We should have wings by now so that if there are predators, we can escape using our wings. But until now, we don't have wings unless, of course, you are talking about night creatures. But uh, human beings do not grow wings. We don't have claws so that we can dig deep into the ground. When typhoons will come, we can burrow into the ground and we would be safe. We don't have the legs of the cheetah so that we can run faster and hunt for food. We don't have the gills of the fish so that we can swim the oceans. If you notice, we are very vulnerable because the moment the baby comes out of his mother's womb, his brain is not yet developed. It would take two years for him to be able to run around and walk around unlike the goat that the goat, the moment it comes out of its mother's womb, after a few minutes, it runs around, it jumps around, and it eats, starting its uh, grass. We don't have that. So evolution must be playing a joke on us. We are at the mercy of the predators. But there's something in man that is not found in the animals. That what make, makes us survive and even thrive in this harsh and unforgiving world. This world is so harsh, especially those in the northern hemisphere. And I'm uh, seeing some friends from Korea. They have, you, you Filipinos should be very thankful. We are in the tropics. Their land is inhospitable at this time of the year. You will freeze to death. Korea is very cold. China, North America, Northern Europe. And yet, man does not only survive, but he thrives because something is in him that is not found in the animals. God touches man. The untouchable God, the invisible God, the awesome, majestic God, touch men. Who is man? Man is very small. Man is very vulnerable. And yet, the psalmist said, you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings. That's in the NIV. In other translations, you have made him a little lower than God. God, men, and all other beings. Yes, it is true that there are spirits that are stronger than us. There are other beings that are stronger than us. But as far as authority is concerned, we are higher than all of this because God has given us authority. And so the first time that God touched men was in creation. Everything that you see around you came into being because of God's word. God said, let there be light, and there was light. There be, let there be water, and there was water. But then after he created all the animals and plants, he created men. He prepared everything for men. But when he created man, he did not just say, let there be men. He formed the man out of the ground. There was planning. There was care in the creation of man. And when man was formed, he was lying on the ground, lifeless. Until God came into him. God breathed on him the breath of life and this lifeless form of dust stood up and became a living soul. That's how God meticulously created man. That's why scientists are quite perplexed that when they examine blood, if they see blood, 
and they put that blood under scientific analysis, they would know whether it is human blood or animal blood. They will know. There is a great difference between human blood and animal blood. And when they find a piece of bone, a bone that must have been thousands of years old, and they subject it to scientific analysis, they would come to realize that this bone belongs to a human being and not to an animal. That's how unique human bones are. We do not know whether the owner of the bone was black when he was alive, whether he was white, he was brown. We don't know whether he was curly hair or plain or blonde hair or black hair, but the bone belongs to a human being. God has created man uniquely and meticulously. That is why even if our bodies compared to the bodies of other creatures may be inferior in size, for example, in strength, but our bodies are unique because God touched it in creation. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. And God's plan for that man because he created man meticulously, uniquely, he wanted this man to rule over creation, over the birds, fish, cattle, every living thing. Man was supposed to be ruling, caring for creation. But because of the sin of Adam, man is no longer caring for God's creation. Man is exploiting. Man is destroying God's creation. Instead of caring for God's creation, man has devolved. Instead of evolved, man has become less than an animal. Animals, for example, hunt. They hunt in order to eat. They kill. Lions, for example, hunt so that they will not be hungry. They hunt for food. But humans hunt not just for food, but sometimes for fun and at other times because of hatred. I just saw a video clip. I don't know if you have seen this. That a man was kicking an infant. And he was crushing the head of this infant. He was kicking and smashing this infant. And this infant was holding on to his clothes, trying to perhaps beg, do not kill me. Ba the baby must have been five or six months old. Why would someone do that? Because of the sin of Adam, he has failed to accomplish the purpose for God, that God has given to him. He has no longer regard for creation. What he, was, he is interested in is what he can get out of creation. We remember several years ago, we went to Palawan. There is a place in Palawan called Rio Tuba. It is rich in nickel deposit. And because it is rich in nickel deposit, miners, mining companies went there and they scraped everything. And so the government had to come in and said, no, no, no. You cannot do that. If you get something from the ground, you must fill in. You must plant trees. And so the DNR went there and reprimanded all of these miners. And now if you go to Rio Tuba, it is filled with trees that were planted by these miners because the tendency of Adam, because of his sin, is to get and get and get. You look at what happened to our oceans. Fortunately, in the northern hemisphere, they have seasons for fishing. 
if you go beyond the season, you'll be arrested. In the United States, you cannot just go fishing any time of the year. There is a set of, set of time where you can go fishing. After that, you are not allowed to go fishing. If you go fishing, you'll be arrested, but not in the Philippines. In the Philippines, you can fish all year round, and yet people are not contented. They use dynamites, poison to get whatever they want, not thinking of the future generations. And so the purpose of God for creating man was not fulfilled in Adam because of his sin. Instead of ruling and caring over creation, he is now destroying creation. Presently, there are governments in the world who are very much concerned about preservation because they have already seen the negative effects of industrialization, the negative effects of getting and getting from creation, and now they are trying to stop all this. But greed in men can never be stopped. That's why God has to touch man once again. God touched man in creation. Now God touched man again in redemption. Because the descendants of Adam failed to fulfill God's purpose. And because the descendants of Adam will now face the inability of, of death because death will come, God has to touch man once again so that man will be back to its original purpose and experience the life eternal with God. And this happened when God entered into another human being. In creation, God entered into this form made from dust. In redemption, God entered into a human being. And from this human being, a baby was conceived, was born, and became the Savior of the world. But some people have a problem with that story. And so, they make their own story. Because their problem is this. If God is holy, if God is sinless, will He not be contaminated? Will He not be polluted when He enters into a human body? And so if God will be polluted, and contaminated with sin if he enters into a human body, that human body should be sinless, should be pure, so that God will not be polluted and contaminated. So they invented a story that this woman was conceived without sin. Now, the problem with that story is that if she was conceived without sin, her mother and her father were also conceived without sin. And the grandparents on both sides should also be conceived without sin. And the great-great-grandfathers, grandmothers, were also conceived without sin. And where, you, where will you end? With Adam. Adam was not conceived, but he committed sin. And so the problem with that story is that they wanted to preserve the holiness of God, the purity of God, by saying that the human being that God entered into was sinless. The reason why God entered into a human being so that that human being will be saved from sin. God was not polluted when he entered into dust, 
when he breathed into the nostrils of this form of dust, God was not polluted. That was dirt. And so God can never be polluted when he entered into this woman. Through the Holy Spirit, this woman conceived a son, gave birth to a son, and this son now restores man into his original intention where God wanted him to be. Because through Jesus, those who will be in Jesus will be able to accomplish what the psalmist said, that man who is created a little lower than the heavenly beings will be crowned with glory and honor that everything will be under his feet. Everything will be subjected to him. But we do not see that now in the descendants of Adam. In the descendants of Adam, we don't see glory and honor. We may invent something that would make us look glorious and honorable. But sooner or later, that thing will fade away. But it is in Jesus that the glory and honor intended for men will be restored. That even when this body will deteriorate and will go back to the dust, we are assured that in Jesus we have this hope of resurrection that there is glory beyond this unglorious situation. It pains us so much when we see people who used to be in great physical condition now deteriorates and is just waiting for the time that God would take them home. Just a few weeks ago, the first cousin of my wife in Iloilo went to the doctor for a checkup. And this boy, he is, he is the most handsome in their family. Among all the cousins, he was the only child. His father was an American, and so his family name is Davis. Guapo talaga siya. When he was born, he was really good looking. The cousins were envious. Kasi mga Pilipino man. Siya Americano. Kalahati lang. Americano. But he was very good looking. And when he was growing up in school, the classmates just admired him. Kasi kahit madilim, nakikita pa rin siya. Yung iba sa atin, pag madilim na, kalimutan mo na. He was good looking. And when he got married, his children were also good looking. Guapo. Maganda. But then after his consultation with the doctor, because he felt something in his stomach protruding. No pain. Walang pain. But he noticed that he was losing weight. Yung guapong guapo noon, hindi na masyadong guapo. Pumayat na. Yung buhok, mas marami pa siyang puting buhok kaysa akin, although he is about 20 years younger than me. And then, later on, the pain started. And last week, he submitted to an operation. And the daughter was calling us, crying, Uncle, stage four, si tatay. It pains us to see someone who used to be in great physical health 
now deteriorating. But that is the effect of what Adam did. That was not the original intention of God, but because Adam disobeyed, he came from the dust. To the dust, he will return. But thanks be to God, because God taught man once again. And through Jesus, this body may go down into decay, may go back to the dust, but there is something reserved for us a body that is glorious, a body that is incorruptible, a body that will no longer experience decay, a body that will be honorable because God has taught men once again. To God be the glory. Amen.